everyone. In uh, this video, we're going to be going over suspension. Uh, I'm going to do a couple different types of lifts on different vehicles. Uh, we're going to go over a basic lift, and that's going to be on this vehicle here. I'm just going to do a slight lift, get it up off the ground, give it a little bit of clearance, and give it some beefier uh, racing wheels. And we're going to do sort of an intermediate lift here. It's going to be basically the same height as a basic lift, but we're going to do a custom axle and uh, push out those wheels a little bit so they're on the outside of the wheel well. And then we're going to end with um, sort of an extreme lift uh, with some custom shocks. And um, so let's get to it. So just a heads up, this may be a longer video. I might need to break it up into a couple different videos. We'll see how it goes though. Uh, so let's move this guy aside. We'll just focus on this one for now. We actually don't need the body for this. Uh, well, actually, no, let's leave it on for now so we can size things up. I'm going to go into my wheel bin here. And what I'm looking for for this guy, I think I'm going to use these slicks here. They don't really have a tread on them. But those might look pretty cool on the back. And we'll use a smaller set of wheels for the front. See if we can find some wheels that uh, have a similar pattern. So we've got this five spoke rim on there. So we should probably find a smaller, there we go. Smaller wheel that has a similar looking pattern to it. Not exactly the same, but it'll work. And so basically what we're going to be doing is, if you notice, on these vehicles, you've got this kind of cutaway here. And normally, if you remember from the first videos where we took this guy apart, the wheels just kind of sit in these little, these little crevices like this. So if these wheels were on this car, they essentially look like that, which, you know, it doesn't look too bad. You could just do that and basically swap out the wheels. You see, they don't really sit very nicely inside there. But if you were content with that, you know, that would be just a basic wheel swap. Uh, but we're not going to end there. What we're going to do for a basic lift is we're going to move the axle from inside this little crevice to the bottom so it's sitting underneath this little housing here. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to glue it on. It's just that easy. But one thing to consider here, well there's a few things to consider. Um, one of those is where the wheel sits against the body. If you don't care about, you know, realism, uh, maybe this isn't a concern for you, but um, if the wheels are sitting here, you have to imagine there's shocks inside, there's some sort of suspension that's, you know, cushioning the, the ride. If it's fully compressed, you don't want the wheel to hit the inside of the, the wheel well here. In this case, it's, it looks like it's going to be pretty good clearance. Normally, a wheel would sit inside the wheel well, and there's extra space inside on a real car. And the same, same here. So when it compresses, it goes up inside there. And you can see that here on this vehicle, where the wheel is actually inside the wheel well. So if the shocks compress, you know, it doesn't hit anything. And if you look at, um, let's see, I guess I don't really have any good examples. Um, if you don't take that into account, it looks kind of funky. So we're going to take that into account. But if you don't care about realism, you know, and you just want to slap some cool tires on a cool vehicle, you know, go for it. But you even have stuff like this, where the wheel well on the back is actually, the fenders have a cover on them. The wheels are kind of completely hidden. It's not like that on the front because you have to turn the wheel. But the same, you know, considerations need to be made there. So we're just going to put this on the bottom. We've got plenty of clearance. The other consideration is how wide you want your car to be. 
you know what your wheelbase is going to be. Uh, I think this looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if I can find the original, the original wheels to see how they looked. But if you're playing, if you're modding this just for you know a hobby, then it probably doesn't matter. You're just going to want to make it look as cool as possible. If you're modding it for Gaslands or another uh, tabletop game where you know the footprint of your vehicle has in-game consequences, you might want to consider not making it super wide. Uh, let's see. Like for instance, this vehicle here. You know, it's got a pretty, you know, exaggerated lift on it. But if you look at the the width of the vehicle, you know, you're adding that much on either side. So your vehicle takes up more room. You'll you're going to run into collisions uh, more often. People are going to have a hard time getting past you, and you're going to have a hard time getting past people. But if you don't mind that, and this is a good example of the kind of suspension that we're going to be putting on here, uh, these supports here that kind of kind of resemble leaf springs when you look at them from the side. That's what we'll be doing on this uh, this Corvette. And here's another example. My Wiener Mobile here, and this one has um, you know very very basic lift on it. it didn't really do much to it um, put some very minor leaf springs on there but in comparison to this you know that's very wide it's almost double the width so just something to keep in mind but for this one it's not going to matter because we're not going to be increasing the footprint very much really at all. So the first thing we're going to do, we don't need this top on here because we're going to use the axles as is. We don't need to, we've already okayed our size. So we just need the chassis. And keep an eye on the sculpt. Got our exhaust on the back. On these ones that aren't super detailed, it's kind of you know, tough to tell sometimes. So here's our back. And these are our back wheels. First step is to take some super glue. And this will temporarily hold things. We're just going to put a dab on either side right in the center. And that's just to keep things in place while we work on them. We'll support it later with some additional pieces. Now this is the hard part, is getting this, and it's kind of hard to do this while filming, but you want to get it dead center, and the way we're going to get it dead center is we're going to look at the existing axle on the sculpt. That's going to be our center line. You're going to want to put it on exact the exact peak of this little arch. That way, you know, it's going to be as high as possible, or low as possible, and it's also going to be lined up. So if you put them, you know, if it's not exactly straight on there, the wheels aren't going to sit flat. So I try to do this while looking through the camera, so it might not end up perfect. But and also, you'll inevitably have wheels, axles that are a little bit bent, and straightening them is possible with a lot of patience. But I'm not going to worry about it in this case for the tutorial. So we're just going to line this up. And you have quite a bit of working time with super glue. Like once you bond it, it's going to be there, but you know you can work around it. And you want to make sure that it's straight and even. See if I can get that on the center of the camera there. See how it's in the middle of the axle, it's at the height of those arches. And we're just going to hold it here. Um, make sure that it's centered on the outside too. Also what I'm doing is pulling the wheels apart as far as they go to make sure that everything's centered. Um, you could glue the axles into the wheels so that they don't move around on you. But I like my wheels, I like my uh, cars to uh, actually roll 
A lot of people uh, will fix their wheels with super glue or some other way so that the cars don't roll around on the table. I find that it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The cars hardly really roll around. And it's pretty easy to reset them where they were. If they do. Okay, so at this point you can let it go. Back it up a little bit and eyeball it. Looks pretty good, looks pretty centered. You know, straight up and down on that existing axle sculpt. So now we need to let it dry completely. So I'm just gonna let it sit here, pause the video, and we'll come back when it's completely dry. Okay, now that that's completely dry, uh, you're, uh, we're gonna glue it down some more on the sides here, but if you, you know, are not happy with this, if somebody, you know, bumped the table while you were letting it dry, or it's not straight, or you notice that it's not where you wanted it to be, with those little tiny dabs that we put on there, you could easily break this off and re-glue it in a different position. It's is uh, you're not at the point of no return just yet. But I'm happy with that position, so we're going to take the glue. And we are going to just dab the sides. Ideally, you would have a glue that's not as runny as this. Uh, some gel super glue works a lot better for this because we're going to kind of be filling the gap between the axle and that little arch. So, but for this, I'm just going to put the smallest little dab on the sides because it's going to fill in and run down. And I don't want it to get everywhere. And this is just going to help it stay in place. And now we will wait again. All right. Now that that's dry and it's pretty stable, if you you know torque on it too hard, it's still going to come off. So don't get too crazy. But it's uh, pretty much in there. And uh, move on to the next step. And the next step in this case is going to be just doing the exact same thing for the front with these smaller tires. So I'll do that off camera because it's exactly the same process and we'll be right back. Now while that's drying, um, I have in the past taken a file to the center of these and make a little notch for, for these axles to sit in. And that does work. It's very difficult to get both of them exactly the same though. So you'll Every time that I've done it that way, there's always been a slight difference in the height of the wheels. Uh, if you can figure out a way to get those exactly perfect, um, I would love to hear about that. Uh, the way I've done it in the past, though, is with a very small triangular file and using the ridge of the file to carve into it. And it's a pretty simple process. You know, find the center, just like you were going to glue the axle down, find the center, and just basically run it across there until it's at the depth that you want. Like I said, I could never get it exactly perfect, um, so I'm not going to recommend that technique, but I think it is a valid, you know, technique to use. And if you can figure out how to get them perfect, um, I think it would make a better result, um, more, you know, just a stronger more stable result, I should say. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this again, wait for this to dry, and then we'll be back. All right, everything should be pretty much dry now on this one. So the next step is we're going to make leaf springs similar to what we have on this vehicle again from the back or from the side you know you can kind of see the leaf springs is a real simple technique and if you look real close you know you can tell that they're not real leaf springs but the uh, effort to result ratio uh, on this technique is really good so uh, we're going to do that here uh, quick tip though if you um, are gluing down your um, wheels and you drip too much glue on the axle and it gets on the tire you can make sure that you're turning the tire ever so often so that the glue doesn't dry on it 
Um, that's what happened here. So I needed to uh, fix that before the glue completely dried. Otherwise, I would not have a rolling wheel. It takes a little bit more vigilance uh, because you're going to have to kind of babysit the glue and turn that wheel every few seconds so the glue never dries inside there. Um, but it is worth it if you want um, wheels that roll. Otherwise, if you don't want your wheels to roll, uh, the perfect place to put the glue is just on that little uh, place on the inside of the axle where it touches the wheel, and one little dab of super glue will stop that from rolling. Okay, the next step is to come up with some sort of material for creating these um, struts or uh, leaf springs or whatever suspension you're looking for. Um, I generally reach for two different things. So this is aluminum tube. You can get it at hardware stores, uh, you know, hobby stores, um, craft stores like Michael's uh, sometimes. But generally, uh, hardware stores is where I pick these up. Um, the other thing that you can use is toothpicks. I buy these toothpicks. They've got this uh, dispenser that's pretty handy. And uh, let's see if we can get some of these out of here. And these kind of have these kind of decorative ends on them. And those are kind of good for scratch building other things, like maybe you could, you know, lash a few of them together and make a mini gun. And then you, you know, have these this little texture on there. We're going to use toothpicks for these. These I also use for making axles. Uh, once I, we'll get to it when we get to the other car, but basically just going to cut these in half and then shove the axle, the existing axle on, the, on there into here. And we'll have a beefier uh, axle. This kind of, let's see, that's what I've got going on here. And I think this was a toothpick for the uh, drive shaft. You've got, um, you know, the same tube on the front there. If you end up cutting your uh, axle, you know, if you need to cut it uh, to get the tires out, the wheels out, that's a good way to replace the axle. So you're just going to focus, focus. You're just going to shove that in there like that, and then you'll have... You know, then you can cut it to whatever length you want. But these are, I mean, these cost almost nothing. So for this, I like to use my uh, side cutters. And I think I mentioned in a previous video that I you know, lost my good side cutters and I bought these, which are not ideal because they have the uh, diagonal. Since then, I picked these guys up at Harbor Freight. They're really cheap, but you see how they have a flush, well, a Harbor Freight's version of flush cut. That's what we're going to be using for this. So basically, I don't want this decorative piece on here, so I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm going to stick that back in there. Now, if you don't know, toothpicks come in a couple different varieties. These are bamboo toothpicks. But they also come in wood. If you get the cheap toothpicks, you know, at the dollar store, I like to use both kinds, actually, for different things. And I'll show you the difference here. And so these are good. The bamboo ones are good when you want a nice round shape. And you want it to be nice and sturdy. And if you don't mind those little tiny pieces of, there you go, the texture on them. If you don't mind that, bamboo ones are good. These ones have a slightly different texture. It's not... The, those lines aren't going through it. You can see what the texture looks like when you actually paint it. You know, that might not be what you want. 
but you know that might be exactly what you want but one cool side effect of these wooden toothpicks and I usually save these tips for making spikes I'm just gonna throw that back in the bucket there he said one cool side effect is that the end gets slightly crimped when you cut him and I'm gonna crimp it a little bit more You stick it all the way in the back of your pliers, you can sort of... Well, that's not going to work, actually, on these guys. It's too long. But uh, you want, like, a little... There we go. That shape. If you try to do that with these guys... I don't know if you could, if you could hear that on the camera, but... It actually cracked the toothpick down the middle. So, for what we're doing... The wooden ones are going to be a little superior. Because you want that flat part because it's going to sit flat against that little arc, the little arch. Or you can have it sit flat against the axle. In either case, and actually I think in this one we're going to sit it on the axle because we don't have a whole lot of room on the arc. Um, Sitting flat there is going to give it more gluing surface, and that's what we want in this case. So then you got to figure out where you want these springs to be. Also, in this case, you might want to think about you know whether or not you're going to use these these exhaust pieces in the sculpt on this one, because when we put the springs back here, we're going to collide with them somewhere. So you may want little tiny springs, or you can move them to the center and get big ones. I think that's what we're going to end up doing. So I'm going to visually kind of eyeball where that's at, and then I'm going to mark with my nail there where the end is. Transfer that mark to my other nail, and then line up the cutters with that. And then we're going to squash that down a little bit and uh, make sure you squash it in the same direction that the other side is squashed in. Okay, so now we've got kind of a little torpedo shape. And then that's going to go on here. This can be a little finicky. So it helps to have a little pair of pliers like this to manipulate the piece. I mean, tweezers would also work, but I find having less tools on the table makes things a little less cluttered. So if you can have a tool that does, you know, more than one thing, it's usually ideal. So I think that's going to work what we're doing here and then so I'm just gonna make a couple of those be right back all right now we've got two and we're just going to glue them down to the axle there and what I've got is super glue bottle with the cap completely taken off and that way See if I can do this with the camera here. I'm gonna squeeze it until a little bubble comes up, and then we're just gonna dip it. There we go, I've got just a little bit of super glue on there. And then we're going to attach it to the car. If you have something you can sort of bump up against, you know, 
that's the best because then you can lay some more glue down and fi kind of finalize that piece. You're gluing straight down to the flat chassis. It's just a little bit less stable. You're going to have to use more glue. So for this, we'll just do a dab of glue at the end. And then I also like to reinforce the sides here. And there we go. Put this down and show you what that looks like. And then here's another little quick tip. See that pool of super glue there? Have a little paper towel hanging by. You twist up the end. This is just my towel I use for like dry brushing, so there's you know paint and stuff on it. But uh, kind of just stick it in that puddle and soak up the extra. The excess glue. Don't let it sit there too long, otherwise your paper towel will glue to it. There you go. Now once we primer over that and paint it, it's not going to be visible anymore. Alright. Now I'm going to do the same for the other side. And this is what it looks like with both of them on there. So you try to get them as straight as possible. You want to make them as even as possible. It's a little bit tricky on this because these are offset. They're not exactly on the same spot. So I had to make some you know, adjustments. But that's basically what we're left with afterwards. These are not exactly straight. Um, you can see this one sticks over the axle a little bit more than that. So they're not totally even. But that's okay, it's not really going to be visible when we get the other side on. So then what we're going to do, once this finishes drying, is we're going to take the rest of our toothpick. And we're going to figure out where the other side of the leaf spring goes. If you wanted, you could make them all the same, uh, all four pieces the same. Uh, but I find it's a little bit... Um, it's okay if the front ones are a little bit longer. So we kind of figure out where those are going to go. Um, I'm going to line it up on the side here, but when we glue it on, it's going to be right on that other one. You can kind of figure, you know, maybe about here, so that when you're looking at it from the side, you can still see them. Oh, out of frame, sorry. You can still see them when they're on the side. So I'm thinking right about here. And then again. I'm going to save the spike for later. Get my crusher. Uh, sorry, I keep going out of frame. Okay, and these, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'll do it off camera, but it's basically going to go here. It's going to glue to the end of that. And basically sit there like that. There'll be another one there. So I'm going to go ahead and make the other one, glue these down, and I'll be right back. Alright, here's what we are left with after putting the rest of those on there. I went ahead and cut the top of this flat. Kind of hard to see on camera, but the way I did that, so I just took these guys, set it flat on there. Let's see if I can get a better angle on this one, and just snipped it. It's not exactly perfect. Let's see if we can get a better. Oops. Apologize for being out of frame again. Yeah. Basically, just snip off the top so it's flat, and then uh, 
get your trusty super glue. And we're just gonna lay a bead of super glue on top of that, just like that. So when it dries, um, it's gonna be a nice flat surface there. You could also do that to the bottom here and maybe you know, blend them in a little bit better. By the way, I did, I did decide that I'm not going to do anything with the uh, exhaust on this build because it's just kind of in a weird spot, so I just cut it out. These will still be here. Maybe when we put the exhaust on there, we'll just use those as a place to you know, put the new ones on, but uh, I'm not going to try to build it into the sculpt on this. Okay, so there's what we got there. So that's the first basic lift that we'll do and that's to essentially simulate leaf springs once it's all painted up you'll see that it's uh you know it looks it looks pretty nice especially from the back and you see those two little you know supports going out there and you could dress this up as much as you want you could put additional you know cross bracing and things like that however you want you just look up you know google suspension and look at the Google images, look at pictures of different types of suspension, and you can scratch build basically any type of suspension out of two thicks or these. And you know, if you wanted really thick suspension, you could even use like bamboo skewers or things like that. Uh, depends. I mean, if you're making like a monster truck and it's sitting way up there, the tires are this far off, you know, you're going to have to build a lot of structure, but you could scratch build something cool. And I might do that in a video later. Um, but that's basically what we're doing on that side. The other side, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to put these toothpicks away and we're going to build a skid plate. And what that looks like is like this. So if you look at the car from the back, actually this uh, armor's in the way, but if you look at it from the back, you can see this is what a back skid plate would look like. So essentially, if you're going to run something over, you know, kind of help you not damage your axles and things like that and all of the underlining underlying structure there. So skid plate is basically just going to be a metal plate that we connect to the axle. And you could take it one step further, put a skid plate on the top and then put some leaf springs on there. But um, that's what we're going to do for the front here. Uh, the first step though to get that underway is to have some extra packaging from a car that you opened or, you know, a cereal box or whatever kind of, uh, you know, thicker cardstock that you have. But since you're probably going to have some cars that you purchased, you should have plenty of this laying around if you didn't throw it away. So all we're going to do for this is take out some scissors and we're just going to cut a shape out. Um, you could, you know, eyeball it on here. This little tab looks like it's going to be about perfect. So we're going to cut that little tab off. And then the rest of this goes in your scrap bin. Okay, so there's the edge. What we're going to do is mark it. We're going to make it the same width as this body. So. If you wanted to get real precise, you could get out some measuring instruments. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make a little mark with my nail there. And then cut along that mark. Pretty good. And then we're going to see how far we need to go to match to get to the front. And for this, you probably want to have the car assembled, at least for the front. So you can see where it's going to hit on that. And you can make a plan if you're going to put a ram on the front so this can integrate into there. Maybe this is the last step that you do once you have everything assembled. Uh, I'm not going to get that crazy with this. 
for just for this tutorial. But if you did want to put RAM on the front of there, I would recommend waiting on this. But we're going to just put it up against the edge of there. I'm going to mark that. Again, I'm just going to kind of pinch it with my nail. See if that came through on the video. Kind of, yeah, you can see that little mark there. So, I'll exaggerate that little mark so you can see where it's at. going to cut that. And then we've got a little skid plate. Okay. And now what I like to do is kind of just round the corners off. Nothing too fancy. Try to make them somewhat symmetrical. There you go. And now when it fits on here, it's a little bit nicer looking. There you go. So one thing I like to do to kind of prep this a little bit more is take our sanding sponge. Um, this side is very glossy and paint will not stick to this very well. And even though it's going to be on the inside, that shiny part's going to be on the inside like this. When you look at it from the side, if it's going to be bright like that, you're always going to see a little flash of color. So I like to rough up the surface. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's a lot less shiny now. And see the edges have that white now. So everything kind of frayed sanded edge. So we're going to paint that before we do anything with it. And any black craft paint will work for this. It doesn't have to be anything special. We're just going to take this off. I like to just use the cap. off here. And just put a coat on it just to knock back that color. If there's a little bit showing through, that's okay. We just don't want it to be obvious that this was, you know, bright orange at one point. I mean, so this is going to be on the inside. The shadows are going to hide a lot of it. second coat if you want. So there's a little bit of orange showing through, that's alright. We're just trying to obscure it. And then we'll let that dry and I'll go rinse my brush. Alright, now that that's dry, we're just going to glue it down. Oops. And the way we'll do that, if you didn't guess, we're just going to lay a bead of super glue across the axle. If I can keep a hold of it. There we go. That's all that takes. And actually, while we're here, let's just go ahead and lay a bead across the front. And 
and it's going to go painted side down. Moving across the axle. And line it up. Make sure you don't get it stuck down before you get it positioned where it needs to be. Try to get it as straight as possible. There you go. Like that. Now I'm just going to press it with my thumb in place. And I'm going to bend it a little bit. It's going to deform slightly. This is a used vehicle. Any little extra distortion we can put on the body is just going to fit with the theme. There we go. And there's our skid plate. Then we got our back suspension and our skid plate. Like I said, if you wanted to take this one step further, it would be pretty trivial to cut a couple more pieces you know, of suspension, put them on there, or however you wanted to do it. But for the most part, you're not going to ever see the underside of the car. If this was an art project and not a gas lines build, you know, I would expect to see under the car more. But I mean, this is going to be the view you get most of the time. And if you crash, you might see the underside sometimes. But I mean, people might pick up your car and inspect it. And you want them to see, you know, the details that you put in. But, like I said, you could take this a step further, or you could, you know, run a skid plate the other way. Uh, you could do any number of things, but um, that's how I do those. And like I said, this is what I call a basic suspension. This is the bare minimum that I put in when I'm doing custom suspension. And it was a little premature messing with that, it didn't dry yet. So this is the bare minimum that I'll do. And the rest of this step is going to be finished when we do painting. And so I'll just run through a couple more little examples. Like I said, this is what that skid, pay, skid plate is basically going to look like when it's finished. This car I did one on both front and back. Um, let's see. Let me show. Again, this is what those leaf springs are going to look like when they're done. You see I did the same on the front and back here. And when we get to exhaust, I'll go over some of the extra things that I did on some of these too. Since I brought it up during this video, following the you know, exhaust sculpts, the exhaust features on the sculpt. Here's an example of that. See this one has the pipes coming all the way off the outtake for the engine and it comes to these mufflers and then there's some exhaust features under here that I covered up. So everything from here back is basically this metal aluminum po uh, pipes, aluminum tubes, and then staged up into a larger aluminum tube that I flared out at the end. Actually, this is three stages. Sorry. This part is this stage. Then there's a, a middle piece that's a little bit bigger, and then I stage it up. So anyway, off topic a little bit, but we'll get there. Okay, so the next step for this one is going to be priming and painting. And we'll get to there eventually. So this video is already getting pretty long. So I am going to split this up into multiple videos. The next one we're going to do, we're going to put some suspension on this one. We're going to jack this dude up. And we're going to put some fat tires on there. Get these guys here to do also. Oops, perfect. That's what he's going to look like when he's done. So stay tuned. We'll be putting that one up soon. All right, see you next time.